What are some things that make no sense but can be proven mathematically? The Banach-Trotsky paradox is a nice example of something that exists because of mathematical objects that have no correspondence in reality. If you have a mathematical perfect sphere and cut it in ways that are only possible in mathematics, single points do not exist in reality, you can rearrange it to get two spheres. And that is just one example of what fricking with infinity can give you. The great Polish sci-fi writer Stanislaw Lem in his book Summa Technology he wrote that mathematics is like a mad tailor, making all possible sorts of clothes. Some of them fit humans, some fit trees or octopi, some fit creature that exist but we haven't met yet, and some just don't fit anything in our universe. Mathematics makes theories that seemingly have no point in physical reality, that might be so, or it might be that we just haven't discovered a way to apply them. Number theory was thought to be useless until cryptography came along. Comma number theory was thought to be useless until cryptography came along. A particularly dark day in the lives of all number theorists, since the step from theoretical math to applied math means an immediate loss of prestige. If you take a deck of new cards and shuffle it, chances are good that's the first time that sequence has ever existed on Earth. 52 is a long butt number. This is less math and more physics, but straws don't work if they're taller than a very certain height, and they don't work at all on the moon. Gambler's fallacy, patterns of independent events do not dictate future results. I know it is true but still fall for it. When a fair roulette table lands on black 10 times in a row it is just so tempting to keep putting money on red. My probability teacher almost every week would say the coin has no memory. That somewhere on the surface of the earth, there is a spot with zero wind, it's a direct consequence of the hairy ball theorem, really, minor caveat, zero wind means zero horizontal wind, and the wind vector could still have a vertical component, second minor caveat, if tunnels, arches, etc, are considered part of the earth's surface, then that makes earth a bit more topologically complex and the results of the HBT will not necessarily hold. It would only not hold if there was precisely one tunnel in the world. If you have more than one genus, the Euler characteristic will be negative and there will be vanishing points on a vector field. The set of integers, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and the set of natural numbers, 1, 2, 3, are both countable. However, the real numbers between 0 and 1 are uncountable. The set of rational numbers, that is, all possible integers and fractions, is countable too. If I add together every number of the form 1 slash n, n, 0, like this 1 stroke 1 plus 1 stroke 2 plus 1 stroke 3 plus 1 stroke 4, it will reach infinity. If I remove all n that contain a 9 when written in decimal and add them together, it's just short of 23. This is the Kempner series and a brief explanation goes, although this will ruin the magic. As numbers get larger the probability of them containing a 9 goes up to the point that so few numbers don't contain a 9 that the series converges. A 1 digit number has a 10% of containing a 9. A 2 digit number has a 19% chance of containing a 9. A 3 digit number has a 27.1% chance of containing a 9. And so on. Another way to think of it is, if you picked a 100 digit number at random, would you expect at least one digit to be a 9? Crap, the chances that reading this thread is so compelling and I got caught up in all the examples of math, that I forgot what the original question is, runs at about 100%. Light moves at the same speed for everyone, if you're moving away from the light, or moving towards it, doesn't make a difference, it's still traveling the same speed for you. The birthday paradox. Get 23, randomly chosen, people in a room. It is likely that two of the 23 people share the same birthday discounting year. I am a mathematics graduate, I understand the mathematics, yet there's still a part of my brain that is thrown by this logic. 0 equals 1. Factorial has to do with the number of permutations that n numbers can make. Since 0 has only one permutation, it's 1. But from a background where they teach you that a factorial means you multiply the numbers from n to 1, this makes no sense at all. A simple proof is to think of n as n plus 1, n plus 1. So, 
3 equals 4 4 equals 6 2 equals 3 3 equals 2 1 equals 2 2 equals 1 0 equals 1 1 equals 1 there's a solid figure called Gabriel's horn that has finite volume and infinite surface area. You could fill it with paint, but you couldn't paint it. I'm sorry to be nitpicky but this paint comparison only seems absurd because the paint coating would be essentially 3 dimensional. You cannot apply 3D object to 2D like this. Look up Jordan measure. When I was in uni, we had a calculus temp sub prove that the temperature here and a spot exactly on the opposite side of the earth are the same, if I recall correctly, he took two classes to write it on many many chalkboards, we were mostly in awe of his handwriting, and later found out he was allowed to turn in his thesis in handwriting, rather than typewritten, before anyone questions, his thesis was not what he burned our time with. E, I pi and 1 equals 0, known as Euler's identity, it combines the 5 major values used in mathematics and puts it into one equation that fits perfectly. Also somehow I is a real number, because an imaginary value that cannot be calculated raised to the power of itself, however the frick that makes sense, is a value that exists in the real mathematical world. It makes a lot more sense when you come at it from Euler's formula. The pi is an angle, you go out to the unit circle on that angle in the complex plane and you get minus 1. It makes perfect sense for me now, but initially I was baffled by the fact that something with probability of 0 can actually happen, and happens on regular basis, and something with probability of 1 can fail to happen. Jokes on you, I play XCOM so I knew this already. You know they say all men are created equal, but you look at me and you look at Samoa Joe and you can see that statement is not true. See, normally if you go one on one with another wrestler, you got a 50-50 chance of winning, but I'm a genetic freak and I'm not normal, so you got a 25%, at best, to beat me, and then you add Kurt Angle to the mix, your chances of winning drastically go down, you see. The 3 way at sacrifice you got a 33 and 1 stroke 3 chance of winning. But I, I got a 66 and 2 stroke 3 chance of winning cause Kurt Angle knows he can't beat me and he's not even gonna try. So Samoa Joe, you take your 33 and 1 stroke 3 chance, minus my 25% chance and you got an 8 and 1 stroke 3 chance of winning at sacrifice. But then you take my 75% chance of winning if it goes 1 on 1 and then add the 66 and 2 stroke 3% chance. I got a 141 and 2 stroke 3 chance of winning at sacrifice. See Joe, the numbers don't lie and they spell disaster for you at sacrifice. Ask where Red Sickle is leaking Maggle. Simpsons paradox is interesting and confusing to me. A trend, positive or negative, occurs in two separate sets of data. But when analyzed together the trend reverses. I also think the khaki needle problem is very cool. Given a mathematical needle, zero width of a set length, what is the smallest area you can sweep out to rotate the needle 180 degrees? It turns out the answer is as small as you want. If you fold a piece of paper in half 103 times it will be thicker than the width of the observable universe. Diameter of the universe, 8.8 .8 times 10 to the power of 26 meters. Width of a piece of paper, 0.0001 meters, 0.0001x. 2 circumflex 103, equals 1.014 times 10 to the power of 27 meters. Scholem's paradox, within the axiomatic system ZF. C. It's provable that an uncountable set exists. However, the Lowenheim Scholem theorem tells us that there exists a countable model for ZFC. So now there is a countable model in which there exists an uncountable set. How can this be? You can have an infinite surface area with a limited mass. I remember it from a source video. He had an example of a cake. Say you had a cake and you cut it in half and put it on top of the first piece. Then cut that top piece in half and put it on top of that piece. Continue this infinitely and you will get an infinite surface area from something you can eat in a day. If you have two 50C one-way valves as series, the total pressure they can hold becomes 100C. My brain struggles with understanding how that works, since they are in series. But that is actually the case.
A helpful way to look at it is to consider that every component in a fluid transport system causes pressure loss. This is due to friction in the fluid or rather viscous heating. So with your example every valve you go through causes 50 C of pressure loss, therefore 100 C. It's pretty complicated but when you change your viewpoint it's a lot easier to understand any piping system. You can disappear spontaneously and appear on Mars. It would take more than the lifespan of the universe but it's possible to calculate the probability of this happening. All planets can be arranged, in order, between the area of Earth and Moon. It seems incredibly impossible, but mathematics prove it. Space is big, you just won't believe how vastly, hugely, mind-bogglingly big it is. I mean, you may think it's a long way down the road to the chemists, but that's just peanuts to space. Douglas Adams. There are two people in New York City with the exact same number of hairs on their head, aside from the obvious, bald, etc. This isn't some probability thing, it's fact. It's the pigeonhole theorem. If I have 10 pigeons and only 9 rooms to put them in, at least one room will have at least 2 pigeons. There is no possible way to arrange the 10 pigeons into the 9 rooms such that none of them have at least 2. Another explanation. Imagine I gathered 366 people. No matter what any of their birthdays are, I can say with absolute certainty that at least two of those people share a birthday. Because there's 365 possible birthdays and 366 people, there's a 100% probability of someone having a duplicate birthday. What I'm saying about NYC, then, means that there are more people in NYC than the most hairs you could ever have on any one head. Neat, A. Eh? The average person on earth has less than two legs. For the average to be exactly two, either everyone on earth has to have exactly two legs or the number of people missing legs has to equally number the people with birth defects that have more than two legs. However, that kind of birth defect is extremely rare, and we know the number of amputees or people born with missing limbs is a much greater number. So if you calculate it mathematically the average is somewhere like 1.999 something which is less than two, so the average person has less than two legs. When someone on Reddit does the math, the probability of our faded thermostomoth being linked approaches one if our faded thermoth is also linked. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe, I publish new videos every day, until then, check another video. Bye for now.